I'd ask maybe just if you could perhaps give us a little detail on some of your reporting, for example, on, on Facebook and the, the story about how a Facebook has become, a, you know, addicted to AI. You talked in there, for example, about um, the its interest in de-biasing, so making AI fairer, being really driven by a business case more than anything else. Uh, could you tell us any more about sort of what you found in that story and how it relates to what we're seeing and talking about today in terms of the sort of societal underpinnings that we're up against? Yeah, so this Facebook story was a nine month investigation that I did into Facebook's responsible AI team. Um, and this story began when Facebook reached out to me saying that they were interested in um, having me do some kind of deeper dive into their AI work. And as I was meeting with different leadership within the AI org, I realized that Facebook had a responsible AI team, which was news to me. Um, and it had one or some form of one for three years. Um, and this was, this was back in the summer of last year. And I was just really intrigued by what on earth has Facebook's responsible AI team been doing for the past three years? Um, because a lot of the conversations that we were having then are still conversations that we're having now about the way that um, foreign actors can uh, weaponize these algorithmic targeting systems to interfere with elections, the fact that um, advertisers can use it to discriminate against different users. Um, and what I found is that Facebook's Facebook's responsible AI team is sort of like the epitome of of the way that I the, the I think it, it really epitomizes some of the flaws of the way that the tech industry has been approaching this idea of responsible AI. Um, the people that that were working on this thing, they were all um, the initial people that started it all had very technical backgrounds. All were machine learning, computer science uh, people who we're just waking up to this idea that math is not uh, not a, not neutral, AI is not neutral. And when they started um, looking into what they should do about that, they then found these ideas, fairness, accountability, transparency, and they made their responsible AI team um, like have those pillars. I think their, their three pillars are fairness, privacy, and transparency. Um, the issue is, these things like responsible AI is not defined by just some vague words. Responsible AI means you need to understand what harms your algorithmic systems are perpetuating and then figure out how to actually mitigate those harms. And like the, the problem was Facebook kind of plucked these three words out of like the vacuous space that is AI ethics without actually thinking about how it interfaces with their technologies. And then they decided to pursue these three things. But if you think about like, what are the actual algorithmic harms of Facebook? Things like amplifying misinformation, things like um, polarizing users, that's not actually addressed by these three buckets, fairness, privacy, and transparency. Um, and one of the other issues that happened is they were, Facebook was very excited to present to me their fairness work because that was the work that they felt was most developed, that they really wanted to, to um, parade around the world and, and demonstrate that Facebook had finally taken responsible AI seriously. Um, but as I was saying before, these words, they are vacuous because they don't have an understanding of power or context, like fair to, to whom. Um, so fairness or any of these words, they have this like squishiness where you can interpret it in many different ways um, based off of essentially what's useful to the business. And in Facebook's case, um, what had happened was they were but even before they built the tools to measure fairness and try and um, make fairer algorithms, there was already this idea of fairness that existed at the company within the policy team that meant like fair, um, like fair, fair meant to them equal um, treatment of like conservative, US conservative and US liberal users. Um, and one of the reasons why they adopted that specific definition is because it's great for the business. If you can, if, if you can continue to pretend that Facebook is neutral, that it's treating everyone equally, then you can sort of ward off regulation, um, especially when there are, there's a conservative government in power. 
Um, but the but one of the really um, bad side effects of this kind of like vacuous interpretation of fairness is that then um, that interpretation directly undermined some of the ways that other employees were actually trying to tackle more deep-seated responsible AI problems like fixing misinformation. Like as I write about in my story, um, there was like an engineer that I spoke to or an AI researcher that I spoke to who their team was actively trying to develop um, AI to catch misinformation. But because uh, in our political context, a lot of in the past four years, there's been um, a lot of conspiracy theories that are specifically attached to conserv the conservative um, political leanings. Um, these AI algorithms that were meant to catch misinformation then affected conservative users more than liberal users and therefore under their definition of fairness were um, should not be deployed. And so they were like actively um, creating these systems and then having them taken out of the platform and prevented from being deployed because of fairness. Um, so I, I think Facebook is sort of, it's sort of like a, um, it is a, a bit more of an egregious example because of its power, influence, and size as a company. But this, these themes echo throughout the tech industry where um, the people that are driving the responsible AI initiatives don't necessarily understand what they're actually doing. They just pluck these terms from the general AI ethics discourse. And then in the end, um, because of business incentives, because of other reasons, um, those terms actually then make everything worse rather than better.